Oh man, you want that new bike and you're gonna do anything to get it, right? Hold on, hold on. You just might be at the risk of having seller's regret. I did, and I'm here to tell you how to avoid it. Sure, you've heard of buyer's regret. You may have bought a bike that you felt would be perfect for you, only to realize that you don't smile back at it when you walk away. Life is short. We should be on the bikes we love. So we've all gotten rid of our buyer's regret bikes rather quickly. But more riders actually suffer from motorcycle seller's regret. This isn't the type of regret that happens when a rider gets out of motorcycling altogether. This type is typically brought on by marriage, the arrival of kids, or financial woes. What we're talking about here is regret selling or trading in a bike to buy another. This could be a bike you had after riding for a while and just let go. But the bike you regret selling is more likely than not your first bike. Right now you're either thinking of the one bike you let go for a new one that has more power, extra fancy tech, or greater comfort. All great reasons to sell a bike. Or you love your new bike and you would never want to go back to the old bike. Yeah, each time I bought a new bike I thought I would never want to go back to my old one and never have regret. But it always creeps in. It could be mere moments after you get the new bike or, like me, a few years later. The reasons for seller's regret are multiple and endless. It could be the looks of the bike or the riding style it provides. My seller's regret does include both those, but it's more the emotional and intrinsic values I held for that bike. If you follow this channel for a while, you likely already know which bike I have seller's regret over. We'll talk more about that in a bit, but first, let's go over how to avoid getting seller's regret in the first place. I probably suffer more from seller's regret than most riders. I have this urge to challenge myself to try new experiences. That includes different types and sizes of motorcycles. I'm also fueled by a strong sense of nostalgia. Those feelings are at odds and fight one another back and forth and finally one wins over for a short period of time until the other comes roaring back. This in part explains why I have switched bikes so much over the last few years. The first way to avoid seller's regret is to simply not sell your bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, easier said than done, right? If you want to get on a new bike or a different riding style, the quickest way is to trade in or sell your current bike. But a trial period might be a better option. You want that new bike, so I'm not even going to suggest that you wait and save up for it. Better to buy the new bike you want and hang on to your current bike for a predetermined period of time. Could be a week, could be a month, just as long as it gives you time to say, yeah, I'm not gonna ride that bike much anymore. What you're thinking now is you can't afford the new bike without trading in your old bike. Well, you have a few simple options. The first one is simply financing the new bike. Pretty sure you're like me. I'm smart with money. I have to be because I'm not rich. Again, like me, the bikes you want to ride are not cheap, especially if you want a Harley or an adventure bike with all the farkles. When most of us want a newer bike, it's so expensive that we need to finance it anyway. We want the best interest rate, so we put as much down as we can to get that sweet rate. And we trade in our own bikes to get a better interest rate. That leads to seller's regret. The reality is, interest rates are meaningless if you pay off the loan faster than the term. I paid off my Iron 883 a year into the five-year loan. When I bought my Lowrider S last summer, I financed all but 1800 of it. I later decided that the high interest rate made me so nauseous, so I paid off the loan in a month. By paying off these loans early, I effectively made the interest rates meaningless. No matter what they were set at. Here's how to combat seller's regret. Keep your old bike, buy the new bike by financing it. Sure, put as much down to keep the interest rate lower. But even if the interest rate can be lowered more with the trade-in, don't do it. If after your set trial period ends, and you find yourself not riding your old bike, Sell it and use the money to pay off a good chunk of the loan for the new bike. Sure, you have to go through the work of selling your old bike, but online marketplaces make it pretty easy to sell, and you get more for it than you would have trading it in. Most importantly, it will be all worth it to avoid seller's regret. <laughs> I know. Another way to avoid seller's regret is to sell the bike to a friend or keep in touch with the new owner. Like I mentioned before, your old bike is likely your first bike, so it's likely a new rider's bike like my 883 was for me. If you had a desire to sell it to get your new bike, maybe down the road the new owner might too. You could buy it back from them when they're ready to get a new bike just like you did. I still have the phone numbers of two different owners of two bikes I sold just in case they still have the bike. So as you may have guessed it, the bike I regret selling is the one that's the foundation of this channel. My 2017 Iron 883. That took me on so many adventures and helped form the Great Eager community that's nearly 8,000 subscribers strong today. What bike do you have seller's regret over? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, you may also enjoy this one down here.